Thanks for checking out this week's FinPrep Trading and Investment video newsletter. Let's go through with a quick recap on 2016. So this is your 2016 year-to-date relative performance, percentage price change. Um, end of the day, spying it up on top of the pile when we compare relative to treasuries, TLT, ETF, your, junk, uh, your gold, GLD, as well as your junk bonds in teal. Um, so our first lesson here would be just the tight relationship, as you can see, between the SPY down here, your candlesticks, and your teal line, your junk bonds. Um, so we look for any potential divergences, as we kind of have here, setting up towards the end of year. Um, but just especially price relative to its trends and patterns and so forth in both charts, um, one to confirm the other. Uh, the second, probably more important point, actually being um, assets falling in and out of favor. Um, in other words, seasonality or cyclicality is key. So though we had gold at massive outperformance um, in through mid uh, year similarly with treasuries uh, as we've seen and demonstrated in prior videos bear market seasonality with regard to GLD in particular we tend to have these beginning of year rallies very sharp um, and with a corresponding end of year sell-off um, you know many folks have noted this um, so it's not not exactly news but it's important to keep in mind as we uh, move through the year and make decisions uh, similarly Hirsch of Stock Traders Almanac is keen to point out November through April tends to be S&P's you know best six month strategy as it were so Let's keep that in mind as we see what happens here at the beginning of your allocations. So SPY pulling in somewhat, um, still looking for potential resistance at 222 should we get further downside. As it is, we're already recalibrated to back to oversold levels on your fast daily stochastic. Your bearish uh, MACD crossover did kind of play out there with a bit of that you know, end of your slippage, but really not the end of the world. Um, so even failing 222, there's still the 220 level um, where you have your trend line off your 420 highs. We've seen that you know, be relevant um, across many of our prior videos even in through here through our last dip. So should we even get down to 222? Not the end of the world, uh, but we'll be keeping an eye on that. Round number resistance on the Dow here, DIA tracking ETF basically still playing out um, and even would go as far to say it's a pretty critical spot that price finds itself here, at least stretching back to you know past few months. Um, so really, if we just take a look at a breakout off the 187 highs, um, even just your one, and it was like one and a half points. Now you, you, know, you can't really even call it a pullback, uh, but found some buying, needless to say, um, and then just connecting in through close here, through low of day here, um, and then your prior close and low of day. Basically, you construct a trend line and basically price finds itself there. So um, interesting juncture for Dow. Similarly with Q's on the other hand, though, really, I mean, a little bit different of a picture where we had a breakout above your 120 highs. Uh, pretty, pretty important, 119, 120. Some consolidation. Um, did get high of day above this, but didn't confirm. So close back within the range, right? So back below 121 and then slipping further from there. Lost trend line and then lost your 20 DMA. I mean, here we are price holding up at the 50 day moving average, pretty critical there. So oversold as well. So we'll keep our eye on the Qs. Uh, would want to see Qs hold the 50 day moving average for overall confidence with regard to the other um, equity indices. Um, interesting here on the trannies that the bearish crossover, the nine EMA, through your 20 daily moving average did kind of preclude um, your um, end of your slippage there. Uh, not the end of the world, but um, we did see how damaging that could be even on the copper chart. Not necessarily expecting a replay or an analog here, but it, it did kind of just seeing that unfold did kind of give pause, right, or concern to how would the end of the year close on the trannies. TLT did manage to get a nice little lift and close above your 20 day moving average. Um, and just a few extra points of upside here as we closed out the year. The trouble is that, you know, it didn't buy you much, but it did get you overbought um, on your fast daily stochastics. Still massively oversold on your fast stochastics on a weekly basis at this critical 116 point here again, you know, channel support, multi-year. Um, so a decent little bounce here. Uh, the piece here, though, that could be concerning is a retest of the 120 now from the underside. So remember, call we had um, in multiple weeks, you know, basically struggling around that 120 level. Um, and then having lost that here uh, somewhat, you know, a retest on the underside of 120, if, you know, harshly rejected and, sold on uh, higher volume could be a concern for a potential great takeout of 116 uh, but otherwise yeah a capture of 120 would be nice to see so dollar basically lost its trading rate you know a little bit of its breakout consolidation and closing just slightly you know to the underside of what was prior um, high so at 26.50 not the end of the world and again post up right up against resistance however on your prior price channel stretching back to april so we'll see what to make of that but definitely long long oversold or overbought really just that rally on the dollar so a little bit of a pullback you know really wouldn't be the end of the world so corresponding move then in gold gold then recaptured the 110 level that trend line we saw stretching back you know many failed bar bear market rallies basically just connecting the tops not the uh, rocket science there um, and then providing support to many of these moves here uh, for that pretty darn good um, first half year for gld so you know price technically resting above it though we'll take a look at the yen chart um, to see that it's it's perhaps not too convincing of a, of a bottom potentially Although, again, 
seasonality is in its favor as we enter the new year. So GDXJ, beautiful, beautiful move there off your false breakout, um, but didn't remember last week's video did close back above that fourth touch, one, two, three, four along this downtrend. Um, so just a nice run, nice shot up, but uh, really kind of reversed pretty hard on Friday. So um, overbought on your fast stochastic and neutral on your, your you know standard fast stochastic. Um, so won't make too much of it here. It's definitely not the place uh, we're interested in entering, but a fantastic move there off that uh, about 28.50 level on GDXJ. Take a quick look here. Junk bonds, junk bonds, just interesting to say here. This recall, we saw sort of um, consolidation here. It technically looked like inverted head and shoulders. It hasn't completed its target. It'd be a few points higher. So consolidating on the underside of this prior price channel, which is good, and above your 50-day moving average. So indicating, gen you know, this doesn't indicate too much concern on our end uh, with regard to the equities. You know, if this chart was rolling over or otherwise acting unfavorable, then we would have to question equities a bit more stringently. So yen here, going back to the relationship between yen and gold, and again, you know, off this, the duration of this move, or the magnitude of this move, the duration of the basing seems insufficient, but you did get a nice pop above your 9 EMA, but couldn't, you know, seemingly finding resistance at your declining 20 and overbought on your ultra fast stochastic. So uh, we'll see. We'd want to see yen hold this general vicinity of, you know, your 81 to your 80, where you had pretty decent periods of consolidation in prior years and months. Um, who knows, maybe a retest of the lows is in order. It, it would it would certainly run counter to our um, traditional cyclicality, but would be a scenario we can't really rule out until we get some nice movement and capturing and holding above your 20 DMA, all right? And finally, on the British pound, uh, that oversold condition did pr produce, you know, a few days of upside. Um, nothing to terribly be concerned about, you know, it didn't quite even touch the 50 day moving average, you still have the potential bearish crossover of the 20 day moving average through that 50. So you know, short term momentum decaying relative to medium term momentum. Um, so potential retest again of it, 118 and in order, um, seemingly here for pound with flash crash lows a few points below it. So we're looking forward to a new year. Uh, 2017 should be interesting. Um, again, you know, in the long run, basically the picture is S&P did break, break out above its 213 um, into new all time highs finally making a convincing run and a nice capture above, you know, a good three to five percent above pulling in somewhat here, but looking for a potential resumption of that move um, um, to the upside here for SPY, but we'll see how the beginning of year shakes out. All right, guys, see ya.